Hi, Vanessa here. In this video, I am going to demonstrate how to knit this chunky cardigan here. Okay, for the materials, you'll need super bulky weight yarn. This is Lion Brand's Wool East Thick and Quick, and it's the color Fossil. Just keep in mind that their stripes and prints are a little bit smaller than the solid colors. So, so these are 87 yards and the solid colors are 106 yards. It is 20% wool and acrylic blend. You'll need several sets of knitting needles. I have these here. So with, so with the body, you'll need a longer cable. And for the body, I used US 9 for the hem and the front band, this is the front band. So I use three different sizes. Everything you need will be linked in the description box to the blog um, where you'll find a list of the materials that I used. So I have crochet hooks here because I am going to cast off with crochet hooks and I'll be showing you how to do that. You'll need a pair of scissors, tapestry needle, a tape measure, some stitch markers. All right, let's get started. So I'm starting with the smaller needles. This is the US 13, nine millimeters. And I'm going to cast on 36 stitches. I'm using the long tail cast on method. You can use whatever method you'd like. Just cast on the required number of stitches for the size you're making. I'm making a size large. Again, if you're interested in the free pattern, the links are provided in the description box. The printable pattern is also available for purchase in my shops. Everything is linked below. Okay, so we're going to work back and forth in rows for about two inches. So whatever you want for the size of your collar, you want to start with one purl stitch and then knit the next stitch. And then purl the next. So you're going to work a one by one ribbing all the way across. Turn your work and then we're going to work one by one ribbing. So, so you're going to repeat the last row working one by one rib. Just purl the purl stitches and knit the knit stitches. So these are your purl bumps. Purl those stitches and knit these stitches. So work four rows of one by one ribbing or until the desired collar size. So I've just completed my one by one ribbing. Now I'm ready to start the yoke. So if you want, you can place a marker on the right side of your work, just so that you know which side is the right side. It'll be easy to tell once we start these stockinette stitches. And you wanna switch out to your larger needle size, US 15, 10 millimeters. And your first row is going to be on the wrong side. So you're purling every stitch across. Row one of the yoke, we're going to purl across, but we're going to place markers um, to separate the front sleeves and back sections. For me, that is six. Follow the instructions for how many you need to purl before you place your first marker. Okay, so that is six. And then I'm going to place a marker here. This will mark the front of our cardigan. And then I'm just going to continue purling and placing markers um, as indicated by the pattern. I have my four rows of one by one ribbing here. I've worked row one, purling all the way across. I've placed a marker six stitches in and then another six stitches in. 
and then I have 12 stitches here for the back. So these are the sleeves and this is the back and then these are the front right here. So we please refer back to the pattern it, which is linked in the description box. So now we're just going to knit in stockinette stitch and this is where we're going to start increasing on both sides of the stitch marker and we only increase every other row on the right side of your work. So you want to knit up to the stitch before the marker. On the right side of your work, slip the first and last stitch knitwise as if to knit with your yarn in the back. And then we're going to knit to the stitch before the marker and we'll work a increase right there. This is the stitch before the marker. I'm going to work a KFB, which is knit front and back. So I'm going to knit my stitch and then without pushing this off, I'm going to knit through the back loop. Okay, so here's the back loop. We just worked into the front loop and knit through the back loop. slide your marker over and then you're going to do the same for the stitch after the marker. Knit through the front loop and then you want to insert through the back loop and knit through the back loop. Okay so you're going to knit across and we're going to increase on the stitch before and after the stitch marker and then we're going to repeat that all the way to the end and slip the last stitch as if to knit. Okay, KFB, knit front and through the back. Slide your marker, knit front and back. Okay, don't forget to slip the last stitch with the yarn in the back, okay, knitwise. So every right side row you're going to increase two stitches at your stitch markers. So that's eight increases every other round. I'm going to repeat rows two and three until I have about 48 stitches in the back or half of the circumference. So I want mine to be about 22 inches and then I will go ahead and separate the yoke so that we can just knit the body. And you can try it on as you go and adjust to see um, where you want it to stop for your underarm. Then we're going to separate the sleeves and place so on the wrong side, you just purl every stitch. Just keep the markers where it's at and slide them over. Slip your marker and continue. Okay, so I'm happy with this size here. So this is my front here. And this is my neck area. These are the sleeves. And this is my back. So now I'm ready to separate the sleeves and work the body. So you wanna grab some waste yarn. So I'm on my wrong side. I'm going to purl to the first stitch marker. I did place this on my shoulders and make sure that the arm section, the sleeve section fits. Okay, so this is the first stitch marker. Now I'm going to place the sleeve stitches on some scrap yarn. Okay, so this is my sleeve section here. This is my working needle. I'm just going to slip these off of the needle. Just make sure you don't twist it. So slip it off pearlwise. Okay. 
Okay, so I'm going to tie this loosely. Okay, just a quick knot, just so I can come back to it later. So now, let's find my working yarn. Where to go? Right here. So now I'm just going to knit straight from the back. Okay, so I'm going to purl the next stitch. And then this very first one, I just want to make sure that it's tight right there. And then continue working your purl stitch all the way across the back uh, part of your cardigan. You want to work an increase somewhere in the back. I'm just choosing right here, sort of in the center. You don't really need to count. Just, just pick a stitch and increase. Since I'm on the purl side, I'm going to purl this one. And then I'm going to come back to the back loops and purl that one. You can use any type of increasing method. So we're adding an additional stitch to accommodate for the stitch pattern that is on the bottom half of the cardigan. So follow the instructions for how many stitches you need to increase. I wouldn't worry so much about the numbers. You basically want a stitch count in multiples of four plus one. Now I'm going to continue purling all the way across. Now we're going to place these stitches here, the, this is the other side of your sleeves, onto scrap yarn. So just like before, place them on your scrap yarn. I'm going to tie this part as well. Now I'm going to purl the remaining stitches from this row. Make sure that very first one is tight. And now we're going to work back and forth with just these stitches here. I don't really need my needles to be this long anymore. This is the reason why I love interchangeable needles. We're going to purl the first stitch. And then we're going to knit three. One, two, three. And then purl one. Okay, so repeat knit three. One, two, three. And then purl one. Knit three. One, two, three, and then purl one. Okay, so repeat knit three, and purl one. My last four stitches, knit three, and purl one. On the third row, we're going to slip the first and last stitch. So slip the first stitch. And now we're going to follow our stitches. So you want to purl the purl stitches and knit the knit stitches. So the repeat is going to be purl three, knit one. Purl three, and knit one. So I'm going to repeat that all the way across and I'm going to slip the last stitch with my yarn in the back and I'm going to slip knitwise. Okay, row four. Okay, so this is where we work our cable stitch. Don't worry, Don't worry it's more of a fake cable. <laughs> so purl the first stitch. So over these three stitches, we're going to skip these two and we're going to knit the third one. Okay, so insert your needle right through the third one, knit that third stitch. And now we're going to go and knit the first stitch. 
And finally, we're going to knit the second stitch. Okay, now we can slide all those three stitches off. And we've got this cross cable. And then we're going to do the same on these three stitches. So let me cover up those stitches. Okay, skip the first two, knit the third. Okay, pull that out and knit the first stitch. Okay, now knit the second stitch. Okay, now we can slide all those three off. Okay, repeat that all the way across, working this sort of cable stitch here and then purl one. Remember to skip two, knit the last one, knit the first one, and then knit the second one. I'm at my last set here. And purl the last stitch. Okay, row five is going to be like row three. You want to slip the first stitch, purl three, and then knit one. Purl three, knit one. And then purl that stitch, okay. You're going to now repeat rows two through five until you're happy with the length of the cardigan. I'm going to go until it measures 18 inches or so, and that's from the underarm down. And don't forget that there is three inches of hem, so you want to factor that in when you're measuring for the body. So I'm happy with the length of my cardigan. Let's see how many sets of these I have. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So I have nine sets. So in the next row, I'm supposed to work another one of these cable stitches but I'm not going to, I'm going to stop there. So it's the row right before the cable stitches. Honestly, you can stop whenever you want. <laughs> you can see later that I stopped somewhere else when I worked the sleeves. I'm going to switch back to my smaller needles for the ribbing, US 13, nine millimeters. Okay, so where I stopped, I'm going to start on the right side of my work. So you want to take a look at your stitches here. These are the things you should be paying attention to. So every purl stitch that's here and here and here, we're going to continue purling those stitches. In the three knit stitches, we're going to purl the center one. So, so it's still a one by one rib. It's knit, purl, knit, purl, knit, purl. But I just wanted to show you where you should be placing those knit and purl stitches. So this, so this is already the column of purl stitches. So is this one. And then these are the three knit stitches. So the center of the three is going to be a purl. So we're going to start with a purl stitch and then a knit stitch and then a purl. So the reason why I showed you that is just some nitpicky thing. <laughs> so you can actually work your one by one ribbing however you like. Okay, so I'm going to work several rows of one by one rib. I haven't decided how long I want it the bottom part yet. Once I complete the one by one rib, I'm going to cast off and start on my sleeves. 
So I'm on the right side of my work right now. When you turn it over, you're just going to knit the knit stitches and purl the purl stitches, which is your one by one ribbing. I'm going to work nine rows of the ribbing for the hem. And um, you can work as many rows as you'd like for the size that you want. So it's pretty flexible. For some reason, my video for the bind off was corrupted. So I'm inserting a combination of the front band and the sleeves just for demonstration purposes so that you can see how to bind off. Okay, so you want to knit two and then grab the first stitch you knitted with your other needle and pass it over and then drop it. Okay, now you're going to repeat, knit one and then pass this one over. So you wanna drop this stitch. Okay, knit one and drop this stitch here. Knit one. So now I'm going to show you how to cast off with a crochet hook. So to cast off with the crochet hook, you just grab a crochet hook that's the same size as your needle. Or if you want a looser tension, you can go up a size. And if you want a tighter uh, cast off, then you can go down a size. So you want to take your hook and place it in the loop as if your needle were here in this direction. So making sure you don't twist that stitch. And then you're going to insert the hook as if to knit. And then you yarn over, pull it through this front loop here. And then you're going to slide that loop off and then pull it through the loop on your hook. Insert your hook, yarn over, pull through, drop it and pull through. Okay. Okay, so once you've cast off the bottom of your cardigan, you want to then pick up your stitches and start working on your sleeve. So I already did this side here and I left this scrap yarn there because it's easier for me to count my stitches. I'm not so good with keeping track on a uh, row counter, so I don't trust myself with that. So I left that on there just uh, as a visual for myself. So you wanna switch back to your US 15. 10 millimeters. So the first thing you want to do is place your needle into the loops that you placed your scrap yarn. So you want to pick up the stitches that you left on hold from earlier. So I'm just going to untie that. Okay, so now I'm going to pick up all of these stitches here. So the very first loop is right there. You want to make sure that you slip it as if to purl because you don't want to twist your stitches. Again, I'm going to leave my scrap yarn, so I'm just going to pick up the stitches all around. And I want to make sure I have the same amount of stitches as I do on the other side. in case I missed a stitch or picked up too many. Okay, so I'm at the end of the round. So I've marked the stitches that I want to pick up. I'm going to be picking up four stitches. Just follow the pattern for the number that you need to pick up. And for me, that's going to be for four stitches. And that may be different from what the pattern says for a large due to last minute changes. Notice that I placed the markers around these stitches that go in this direction because we did go in this direction here. But what you want to do is pick up stitches in between so that the direction of your knitting will go in that direction. 
So there are two stitches on both sides that I am going to also pick up, but they're not going to count against the stitch count in the end. We're going to reduce these. So you just want to pick up those loops and then knit them together with the nearest stitch and that will help decrease the space that you'll get the hole. And if it doesn't, you can always finish off with your tapestry needle and close it up at the end. When you're weaving in your ends. Okay, so I'm just going to pick up these two, just the top loop. I'm inserting it as if I'm purling, so I wanna follow the same direction with these loops here. Okay, the next stitch. So this is the stitch we created, but I'm going to go in between the two stitches. So right into this space in between on top, as high as you can go. You want to grab your working yarn. Make sure you leave enough tail for you to weave in later. Place it on your needle and pull it through. Okay, so that's one that we've picked up. Now in between these two, I'm going to pick up another stitch. Between these two, I'm going to pick up another stitch. So you'll see it looks like these stitches are going in this direction now. So here's the three, we have one more. It's going to be to the left of this stitch here. Now the two gold markers, we're just going to pick up those additional stitches. Okay, so we're going to pick up the next loop here. And now we're going to start knitting. So I'm going to place a marker here. This is going to be the start of my round. I'm just going to place my scrap yarn in there. Okay, so I'm going to knit every stitch around and when we get to the end, I will show you how to decrease the additional stitches that we picked up on the sides. So I'm going to make sure that's tight, my first stitch. And then I'm just going to knit all the way around. So knit every stitch until you get to that underarm part where we picked up extra stitches. Okay, so we're back at the underarm. So I can tell this is my last stitch because that's where my scrap yard ended and then the gold stitch starts. So I have a little illustration here that shows the stitches that were picked up. The blue ones are for the four on the underarm. The yellow ones are the ones that we don't want. Those are the extra stitches. And the gray color is just um, the sleeve stitches. So what I'm going to do is knit these two together. Now I'm going to knit these two together. And I wanna make sure that I pull my stitches tight. I don't want additional gaps. So this is the one we were meant to pick up. You can tighten that with the tail. So I'm going to knit the next two. Those are the stitches we do want. Now I'm going to knit the fourth stitch and this extra stitch together. When you knit two together, you're just inserting through both loops to knit your stitch. I'm going to remove my marker real quick. And I'm going to knit these two together. Okay, so this is going to be the end of my round. This very last extra stitch is going to be knitted with the first stitch. Okay, now you should be back at the required numbers. So I'm going to knit in stockinette for approximately three to four um, inches. So for me, that's about 13 rounds. So knit every stitch. Okay, so this is going to be the end of my round. And then I'm going to continue the stockinette pattern until I have to start this stitch pattern here and then I'll end with the one by one rib. So after you finish about three to four inches of stockinette, 
we're going to start working with the cable stitch. So rounds one through three, we're going to knit three. One, two, three, and then purl one. Okay, so repeat knit three. One, two, three, and then purl one. Knit three. One, two, three, and then purl one. But it's a uh, it look round four. Okay, so this is where we work our cable stitch. So over these three stitches, we're going to skip these two and we're going to knit the third one. Okay, so insert your needle right through the third one, knit that third stitch. And now we're going to go and knit the first stitch. And finally, we're going to knit the second stitch. Okay, now we can slide all those three stitches off and then purl one. And then we're going to do the same on these three stitches. Okay, skip the first two, knit the third. Okay, pull that out and knit the first stitch. Okay, now knit the second stitch. Okay, now we can slide all those three off. Okay, so continue that all the way around. Remember to skip two, knit the last one, knit the first one, and then knit the second one. Okay, you're going to repeat rounds one through four until you're happy with the length. Keep in mind that there are three inches for the cuff. I ended on round four, but again, you can end wherever you like. So these stitches sort of pull your work in, and for that reason, I'm going to switch to a US 11, eight millimeters for the cuff, because when I worked the nine millimeters for the ribbing here, it was, it wasn't as tight as I want it to be. So the cuffs are going to look wider than this part just due to the fact that this ribbing here is a little bit tighter, it brings it in. So again, if you want this a lot smaller, you'll need to go down um, your needle size. I went down one size to US 11. You can even try US um, 10. Remember you wanna stop after you work this row here. Now from these three, I'm going to knit, purl, knit. And we're keeping the purl stitch as is. Here is the set of three. We're going to knit, purl, knit. Purl stitch, set of three, knit, purl, knit. Okay, so continue that all the way around, purling the purl stitches, and then for the center three, we're going to knit, purl, knit. So I'm going to repeat that for nine rounds. I want it to be the same length as the ribbing here. I might have to do 10 rounds because it's a smaller needle. Okay, so I did work 10 rounds of the ribbing. And now I'm ready to bind off like we did here at the hem section. Okay, so you want to knit two and then grab the first stitch you knitted with your other needle and pass it over and then drop it. Okay, 
Now you're going to repeat, knit one, and then pass this one over. So you want to drop this stitch. Okay, knit one, and drop this stitch here. Knit one, and drop this stitch here. So I have here an eight millimeter crochet hook. I'm just going to insert that into the loop. So I'm just going to bind off the rest of this with my crochet hook. Okay, so repeat that all the way around. Okay, my last stitch here. Okay, so I'm going to cut my yarn and then I'm going to pull this through and grab your tapestry needle. So this is our first stitch here. So I'm going to insert my needle through the top stitch, pull it through, and then I'm going to go back into this stitch here. So I'm following the working yarn back inside through the center. Okay, so that gives it a cleaner edge. And then just weave in your ends on the inside. I'll do that later. Okay, so you want to grab your smaller needles. These are my US 13 9 millimeters. And we're going to pick up stitches along the side here so that we can work the collar. My tail is quite long because this is what was left of one of the balls. So I'm actually going to use this and then attach more yarn when I run out. If you're just using a brand new ball, just grab the tail and then place it on the corner and pull it through. So I have already picked it up here and pulled it out so that it has a larger space so that you can see it. So you wanna start at the edge here so right through the last stitch, place your yarn on your needle and pull it up. And then into the next row here, insert your needle and pull up a loop. And then the next one is going to be quite small so you won't be able to see it. It's right here. Remember we slipped our stitches on the right side. So every one of these loops you see is actually two rows. So the next one is right there. It's really small. So it's this, this one here. Okay. Now if you want to use a crochet hook, you can do that as well. This is the next row here. The rule of thumb is you pick up three stitches for every four rows. So I've got three stitches here. I'm going to skip this fourth row and go into the next one, which is the smaller row here. So it's in between these two loops. So it's this row here. The next row, that's one, two, and then the next one is the smaller row. That's three, and then four. So I'm going to skip this next row here and go into the next one. One, next row, two, and three. So I'm going to skip the next row which is right here, right here. I'm going to go into the next one and pull up a loop. So that's one, two, and three. Okay, so continue picking up three 
loops, three stitches for every four rows. So if you look at these cable stitches, there's a row where you twist your stitches and then there's three rows in between. I would try and place the three stitches in this area and then skip the cable row so that you can, because there's a larger hole there, you want to pull that together and you can do that by skipping that one. So remember I said for every three, for every four rows, you pick up three stitches. So this would be one, two, three, and then that's the fourth row here, which is this row, and then one, two, three, and then I'm going to skip this one here and go into the next row. So I've got one, two, three, I skipped this one. One, two, three, I skipped this row. One, two, three, and then I skipped this row. So if you don't have the exact amount, once you get here, I would follow the pattern of these cable stitches and skip the one row that actually twists. And then just count your stitches after to make sure that you have the same amount on both sides of your band. Once you pass that part, you'll be able to see the rows uh, more clearly. So I've got one, two, three. I'm going to skip that row, going to the next one, two, three, and then skip the next row. If it helps, you can try and pull that side stitch apart. Okay, so my next one is right here. So here's one row and there's the next, right into, it's in between these two legs here. So I'm about at the end, this is my collar here. To skip that one and then one two and then pick up one last stitch okay so one last stitch at the end so I'm running out of yarn so we're going to work a one by one rib I'm going to start with a purl stitch it doesn't really matter so I'm going to start with one purl stitch. I always like to tie my strands together. Okay, so that was one purl stitch and then I'm just going to work a one by one rib. So that's knit, purl, knit, purl, and then you just repeat all the way across. So depending on how many you picked up, you may or may, end with a knit stitch or you may end with a purl stitch. Just make sure that you knit the knit stitches and purl the purl stitches on each side. So I'm ending my last stitch with a purl stitch. So on the right side of your work, you're going to slip the first and last stitch knit wise with your yarn in the back and then you follow the pattern for your one by one ribbing. So that's purl, knit, purl. So you're just knitting the knit stitches and this is a purl stitch here. So I'm going to purl this stitch. Okay. Purl this stitch and knit this stitch. So you want to repeat for about 10 rows or until you're happy with the width of the band and then you can cast off. Remember to keep track of the number of stitches you have so that when you go and pick up stitches on the other side, you'll need to pick up the same number of stitches. Okay, I'm at my last stitch. 
Make sure you slip knitwise with your yarn in the back. So I'm going to work 10 rows of my one by one ribbing and then I'll take a look to see if I'm happy with that size. Okay, so I'm happy with this size here. I'm going to cast off. I'm going to knit two and then grab the first knitted stitch, pass it over the second and drop it, knit one, pass over the stitch and that's going to be your repeat, knit one and pass over the last stitch. So you should be pretty familiar with um, binding off or casting off by now. If you need assistance, you can go back to one of the other bind off videos. Again, I love to use crochet hooks, so I'm going to use one of my larger crochet hooks to bind off the rest of these stitches. Okay, so now I'm ready to pick up stitches on this side here. I'm going to start up here because I want to pick up my stitches on the right side of my work. And just remember that you need to pick up the same number of stitches as you did the other side. So I'm going to start in the corner here. So grab your yarn and place it on your needle. Okay, pull it through. And now just like the other side, I'm going to pick up approximately three stitches for every four rows. I'm going to pick up stitches along the edge between the side stitch and then the stitches on the next column. Okay, so I've cast it off both sides and I've weaved in all my ends. So when you weave in the ends, you want to make sure there are no holes or no, no large holes. And if there is, you can use the tail to work duplicate stitches. Alright, so I'm going to block this and then I'm done. Alright, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe, hit that notification button so that you'll be notified every time I post a video. I hope you had fun knitting up this cardigan and I will see you next time.